Welcome to the Potter Blog site, September 5th, 2014. The Department of State is expecting to have to evacuate three CDC scientists per month as they come down with Ebola or are exposed to Ebola. All of this as a result of a U.S. surge of personnel, medical personnel, into Africa. Now, as where we get this information from is this contract information that was uh, released uh, yesterday. It's for Emergency Aeromedical Evacuation Services. It is a contract uh, given to the Phoenix uh, Air Group, basically for the aircraft that evacuated Dr. Brantley and Nancy Reibolt into the United States. Uh, here's the sole source justification for this contract. And what we've done is gone through and summarized the information in here. And there's some very interesting information in here. Uh, we'll have a link to this on our webpage. Uh, you can find a link on the YouTube video or you go to potterblog.com and get the link. So uh, basically here's our summary of this. It's that the U.S. State, State Department has issued a six-month, $4.9 million contract to Phoenix Air Group for the use of the only two aeromedical biological containment system aircraft available in the world. The aircraft are needed to support a surge of U.S. government personnel in the Ebola-torn regions of Africa. The contract justification states that CDC is expecting to internationally evacuate up to three yeah, Ebola cases per month. Now, the following rationale was given supporting the Rush sole source contract. One, very important, professional medical personnel were refusing to deploy to Africa without an evacuation plan. Two, Mexico, Japan, Canada, the UK, UAE, WHO, and the UN were attempting to contract for these aircraft. Now the reason these aircraft were available for contract is because the Obama administration had previously dropped funding for these aircraft. Three, the CDC regulations for the transport of asymptomatic Ebola exposed personnel are so onerous that only the ABCS aircraft can support evacuation of exposed personnel. Now we've tweeted about this several times about the left-handed CDC not knowing what the right hand is doing. Uh, the CDC basically is requiring that if somebody is a potential Ebola victim that the only method of transport allowed is an air ambulance. But in its guide to air ambulance people, uh, CDC basically advises them not to transport uh, Ebola patients and puts all sorts of restrictions on them. Now there was some other very illuminating information that came out of this uh, contract. One is, is that Europe has denied overflight for Ebola medevac flights. Two, the Azores, this is a place where aircraft stop mid-Atlantic mid to refuel, they denied civilian airport access for Ebola medevac aircraft refueling. Uh, eventually they did allow it, the aircraft to land on the military uh, bases. Three, all Ebola flights must land at a, at a military airfield for quote, security reasons. You know, terrorists get a hold, getting hold of an Ebola body is a nightmare. And we've discussed that in other places, but to get on with it. Uh, four, the U.S. military does have a transport pod, but it does not allow for access to patients, and government regulations prevent its use on commercial aircraft. Uh, basically what this means is, is that once they lock you in that pod for the remainder of the trip, you're stuck in there. Nobody can give you an IV, nobody can help you, nobody can give you water. That's why this pod is not usable for these type of evacuations. Now our analysis of the situation is that the purpose of the State Department's contract is to give a false sense of security to CDC personnel who wouldn't otherwise deploy to Africa. Nothing, and this is very important, nothing in this contract addresses aircraft support services such as manufacturer response to aircraft stuck on the ground, AOG, in Africa. It's important to remember that aircraft don't fly along without support, and bio-level 4 aircraft maintenance is non-existent. Now some might say that, well, they'll get the uh, military to do maintenance on this aircraft. Well, it's a commercial aircraft. Again, a world of regulations. Government is a nightmare of red tape. You know, that's one of the reasons why FEMA failed in Katrina. 
But moreover, the contract's stated reparation rate of three Ebola-infected or exposed U.S. personnel per month assumes an insanely small amount of interaction between the pool of people at risk. Alternatively, it means only the creme de la creme of USA response personnel will be evacuated and the rest will have to remain in Africa. And at three per month, once these people start getting exposed, you know, the, the ring that you have to put around somebody who has it is way more than three people. So only the creme de la creme of CDC, that means the politically connected, are going to get evacuated, despite what they tell the people who are deploying there. That's the purpose of this contract. And maybe that's not what they had in mind, but the logistics of the contract mean that is the case.